From the beginning, we were wrong. And only now, well into the second decade of the conflict, have we begun to understand the mistakes we have made. We lived in harmony among the Fae, in a world awakened to new magic. Perhaps we should have foreseen what might be born on this rising tide. What force might awaken. A force powerful enough to twist even the eternal and immutable faith <laughs> But Gadflo, the new king of the Winter Court, surprised us all. Singular among his people, he was all that other Fae were not. Aggressive, ambitious, visionary. He had power like none we had ever seen. Terrible and deadly. Gadflo and his followers, the Tuatha De Aon, believed that a new god was to be born in the east, beneath Gadflo's crystalline fortress of Amethyn. In the name of that god, they marched to war against the young races of Amalur. Against a mortal army, no matter the power of their god, we might have been victorious. But the Fae are creatures of magic, not bound by the laws of life and death. Each two as are fallen on the battlefield would soon rise again, for the Fae do not know death as we do. How could we stand against such a force? For ten years the war raged. For ten years the armies of men and Alpha fought and died. But as our numbers dwindled, we knew that it was only a matter of time. Our fate had been written. At least, that is what we believed. Until you died. What do you think this one is then? Alpha? Baran? Could even be a Jotun? Always a surprise, eh, Garan? Eyes on the job, boy. Don't matter what it is. Dead's dead. And be thankful for that. All we've seen. Go on and pull back the sheet, though. It'll need to be in our report, one way or the other. One of the Varani women. Hmm. Must have followed a mercenary band over. Maybe one of them herself. Doesn't much matter now. Fared pretty well, though. All right, then. Make sure it goes into the report. <laughs> you know he'll want all the details. Amazing how well the body held up. Better than I've seen. I'm just glad it's not moving. Must have been born under a lucky star, this one. Anything else we need? Unless you'd like to name her... I think we're done. Put her with the others. Well, that's it for you then. Better luck next time.
You! Up there, please help me! Please! More scum? No. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I... If you hadn't come along, I... Wait. I've seen you before. On the slab. You... You were dead. It worked. By the tome, it worked. You're alive! I'm not dead. No, no, clearly not. Not anymore. But you were. The Well of Souls remade your body. We thought you were another failure. But the Well restored your soul to your body, and it worked. We must get you to Professor Hughes right away. He'll have questions for you. Who are these attackers? Oh, my. You don't know? Oh, perhaps the process damaged your memory. They are the Tawatha Deon, the enemies of all the young races. We've never seen them this far inland. Not even during the invasion. I, I don't know why they are here. Hughes may have the answer to that as well. You must stay alive and reach him. Who is Hughes? Professor Formerus Hughes. The Well of Souls is his life's work. The Tuatha are coming in through the lower levels. If we hurry, we should be able to beat them to the top. Take these. They'll help keep you safe long enough to get to Hughes. Now, let's get going! Die, Tuatha bastard! Wait. You're not one of them. This is where we part ways. But take whatever you want from this armory. We might have a few things that would fit you. Just make sure you get your shoes. We can hold off the Tawatha here. I need more help. There's nothing more I can do except to stay here and slow down the Tawatha. But this is the armory, after all. Check the chests. We might have a few things that would fit you. With luck, I'll see you on the outside. You've made it! And look at you! Even with all you've been through, the Tuatha, your return from the dead... Please forgive me, you must be terribly confused by all of this. I am Fomerus Hughes, and this is my laboratory at Alastar. Everything you see here is dedicated to one thing, the Well of Souls, the pursuit of immortality. And you, you're my first success. If we only had the time, there's so much we might learn from one another. What's going on? Too much to explain right now. The Tawatha have come to stop my work, but I don't believe they know about you. Not yet. What's important is getting you out of here safely. You're the only proof of what we've achieved here. I may not be able to save the well, but I can ensure that its only success is safe. Let's get out of here. Yes, yes, you're right. I, I've got my notes, but it's most important that you stay safe. It's just that you... You're... Fascinating. Simply astounding. I'm not certain what's caused it, but somehow... Uh, yes, as I was saying, I'm not sure what... Perhaps I should go see it. Sir! Sir! Mr. Hughes! The Tawatha have reached the lab! They're inside the... Oh. Ah. No! We've got to get you out of here now! Quickly! Follow the path to the town of Gorhart. Find Agath. He's a friend, and he may be able to help. No matter what else, stay alive! Go! Go!
You've come from the tower, haven't you? Name's Agarth. Maybe you can help an old Fate Weaver, eh? What's a Fate Weaver? Fate Weavers look at the great tapestry of fate. The threads will tell us how a life will unfold. But knowing the future and being able to change it are two very different things. There's trouble at the tower. Trust me, I've known that for a long time. Nobody can change fate. Poor old Fomidus Hughes. He respected the way the world works. It's a shame. He'll be dead by now. What makes you think he's dead? The cards told me that the Well of Souls would work. But Hughes's success would come on the day of his death. He took it pretty well, honestly. Although we did a lot of drinking after that. Can you give me some help? I suppose I could spare a little help, in memory of Hughes, or in celebration of his success. Whichever. That's okay. I was dead, too. You? You're the one. Then that means it all makes sense now. The cards this morning. I drew the Gravedigger, the Running Man, and the Beast. Prepare yourself. They're coming. <laughs> what? How? What are you? The threads of fate. I've seen them before, but I've never seen anyone manipulate them like that. You just changed how the world was supposed to work. How did you do that? I don't know. I just did it. You just... Fate is the will of the gods. No mortal should be able to change it. How is that even possible? Come here. I'm going to do a reading. You might be able to change the threads, but fate will still have a plan for you. I promise not to tell you if I see your death. Do you always see death? It's a gift. Some people paint landscapes. Other people write poetry. I peer into the weave of fate's tapestry and see people's deaths. Is this why Hugh sent me? That would be my guess. He was an academic, but he had a proper respect for fate's plan, unlike most gnomes. Fine. Show me my fate. You're nervous. Relax. This is what fate weavers do. I'll be seeing your place in the pattern of destiny. Who you are, what you've done, where your path takes you. Or, at least, I should be. You're real, right? I swear, I haven't had that much... I'm real. You must be drunk. I am. But still, I've never seen someone whose fate was just... missing. Not even when I was drunk as the King of Ballads. This doesn't make sense. All mortal creatures have a place in the pattern. You should have one too, dead or not. If this is true, and I'm not saying I believe it, then your path is yours to determine. What did you see? I can see the threads around you, but they're shifting, changing so rapidly, I can't make sense of them. Normally the threads would guide my hand to the cards, and I'd use those cards to see your pattern in the weave. But it just didn't happen. They wouldn't focus. So either there's something wrong with me, and there isn't, or there's something very wrong with you. What does this mean? It could mean nothing. Or it could mean everything. The world is changing. You might be a sign of that. Or maybe the cause. I've never had a reason to doubt my own readings. But we should consult with Arden. He's not a friend, but he's got a good eye for the tapestry. I'll meet you at his home to the east. I'm going to see if I can be of any help to the wounded at the tower. Interesting. You're not at all what I expected to find here. You killed Arden. Oh, is that the name of this fate weaver? No, the Tuatha I was following killed him. I was hoping his corpse would give me an idea of why they were here. Now I know. They were hoping to find you. 
Why assume I'm involved? Knowing you, you're definitely involved. But something tells me I know you better than you knew yourself. How do you know me? Don't you remember me? I'm hurt. No time for introductions now. The Tuatha are still on the move. I'm certain that we'll see one another again. Soon. Be on your way. Arden's dead. How did this happen? The Tuatha killed him. Why would they have come here? Why kill a harmless old fate weaver? They couldn't know that you were headed here. I mean, the stingy bastard owes me a week of drinks. Doesn't mean he deserved to be murdered. I was hoping to avoid this, but I think I'm going to have to take you to Delok. Hey, this wasn't my fault. Maybe not directly, but something isn't right. His fate was changed, and you're the only person I've seen who can do that. I'm going to have to handle this myself, I guess. I was hoping I could avoid Delok. Go. I'll meet you there once I give Arden a proper funeral. It's good you were here. I was beginning to think you were just something I saw in the bottle. Welcome to the ruins of Delok. Why are we here? Because for some reason, you can change fate. In here, I can get a glimpse of the whole of the weave and see where you should fit in. This is the place. Yes. It doesn't look like much, but in these ruins lies the Theater of Fate. The ancient home of the Fate Weavers. Come with me. No telling what we'll find down there. I've seen this. This moment. I'm sorry, my friend. This is as far as I can take you. <laughs> Another victory! He was supposed to... Do you have any idea what you've done? What sort of power you're playing with? I changed fate, right? You absorbed everything he was. Everything he would do. You changed the weave of destiny itself. Because of you, there are deeds he won't do. Children of his that won't be born. Victims that won't die when they were supposed to. He tried to kill us. Yes, I'm aware. But there's still no telling what damage you could do if you aren't careful. You're much more dangerous than I thought. We need to get you to the Theater of Fate right away. Guards, I should have brought another bottle. Another victory! No surprise in this Skaru found its way to this place of power. Everything about these ruins is dedicated to this room. And at the center of it all is the Destiny Stone. With it, the Fae taught the Fate Weavers the answers to the deepest mysteries of fate. Put your hands on the stone, and maybe we can find answers to your own mysteries. The Destiny Stone came apart at your touch. And all around you, the tapestry of fate, unweaving itself. And there, at the core, was the Codex of Destiny. The wisdom that the Fae used to help the first Fate Weavers understand the nature of the Weave. Don't you see what this means? That I broke your fate, Rock. Ha! A small price to pay for the Codex of Destiny. If we can find a way to read that, it might help us understand something about you. But for now, just understand this. You're changing the fate of everyone you meet. That could make you more powerful than anything that's walked this world. This means I'm unstoppable. No. You can still die or fail. But fate doesn't enforce the weave on you. Your gift is freedom to you and to those around you. And that means I owe you a... Wait, what's that? Purge the abomination! In the name of Gadflaw! Atta 
I'm beginning to think that these Tuatha don't like you. Now why do you think that might be? After all, someone who can change the fate of the world, who wouldn't want you? How did they find me? I'm not sure, but they're very well informed about your location. They came straight here from Diden Hill, but they're not nearly as interesting as you. Especially now that they're dead. Now it's my turn. Why are you here? I came to understand my fate. Ha! Knowing the future is for fools. Who reads the end of a book before it's time? Save your attention for the present. Like that codex you found? Our scholars thought those were all gone from the world. But you're just full of surprises. Good luck understanding it. That's fey knowledge. They don't even have a written language. The stone is simply embedded with what they know. Unseeable to mortals. How can I understand it? Normally, I'd suggest looking in Issa. But the Fae are not fond of unexpected guests. But don't look so sad. There's still hope. When you're ready, meet me at the House of Ballads. We can't trust her. Never met a Darklefar who'd give me a straight answer even with a sword at their throat. But she wasn't wrong about that codex. Just be careful doing anything she suggests. Meanwhile, we can't just ignore the Tawatha that are tracking you. We need to do something about them. How can we find them? She said they came through Diden Hill, didn't she? They don't belong in these lands, so they probably left a trail wide as an Eden's backside. Meet me there, and we'll track them down. Maybe we can find out why they're after you. Or at least how they can find you so easily. I've got some final rites to perform before I leave this place. Glynel, I assure you it's an ancient codex, just like in the tales. Intriguing. And why would such a thing be revealed to a child of dust? And here I was beginning to think that you'd never show up. This is Glynel, Lore Master of the House of Ballads. Give the Codex over to him, and he may have your answers. You must be Lady Shear's friend. She speaks very highly of you. An occasion rare enough to be worth recording in its own right. But let's see this Codex. Can you interpret this? The fabled Codex of Destiny. When the Fate Weavers formed their order, a High King gave his own wisdom to his system. To have such knowledge in your hands is a tremendous gift, but why did it reveal itself to you? Because I have no fate. Nonsense. All children of dust have a story that is written before you see your first dawn. Now, I can only make out some parts, but this is odd. The Codex speaks of an exception, a void, an end to the endless. This is simply too much. The High King would never pawn such absurdity off as wisdom. I assure you, it's real. I'm sure you think it is. I fear you must have been taken in by a forgery. A perfectly created one, perhaps, but a forgery nonetheless. But this Codex speaks of impossible things. Changes to fate, death of the immortals, and other heresies. To ascribe these lies to the High King would be... I'm sorry, but I must ask you to take it away. I will have no part in these lies. Glynel spends his life cherishing old stories, but show him something truly new, and he dismisses it. Tragic. Is the Codex really a forgery? No, I bet my blades that it's real. Glynel may be a very learned scholar, but it's been ages since he had to learn anything new. Most Fae don't take well to new ideas. If this old fool thinks the High King would never have written the Codex, then it's all the more important that the High King see it. How am I supposed to meet him? It would be difficult. His court is in the city of Issa. Very few mortals are permitted in its gardens. I do know one individual who can grant you permission to enter, but you'll have to meet him alone. Why alone? Nirolem is a private person, and he carries a grudge against me. Although perhaps... Person isn't the right word for him, nor is him. You'll find him in southeast Dallantoth at Cair Nirolim. Just head towards the giant tree and, well, you'll see.
The curious one seeks a way to the Fae, but it has found its way to the boughs of the World Tree instead. Rest, Quickling, and I may study you. What are you? Look around you, and I am all that you can see. My roots spread across Dalantarth. My leaves read the winds from Frostbrine Coast to Alabastra. My family and I circle this world. We were saplings when your kind emerged from the dark. And we will grow with you until this world burns once again. I need to meet the High King. My roots spread wide and deep, and I have heard what brought you here. But I cannot see where you go hence. The time of the Fae is passing. I must shelter them in their twilight and protect them from the corruption that spreads in their kin to the east. I have a codex for the High King. I know your needs. But the Predators circle Issa in her nest, and I cannot allow another to enter. Issa's end has always been certain, buried beneath Prismere Blades. I can only hold back the tide. But you, perhaps you can change the currents. Where you tread, you mark all you touch. Before I would help you, I must know. Will you be a kind gardener, or a careless reaper? What do you require? Like all quicklings, you are eager to act. I would rather see the method of your action. A tribe of trolls has been corrupted with Prismere. Their matriarch, Nash, has united the clans in the first step on the path of Dalantarth's demise. You can change this fate, but to what? In doing so, you may awaken a more dangerous threat, like your ally, Aelin Shear. What do you know about her? She walks a dark and tangled path. A path you once walked together, before you died. But your path is your own now. Defeat Nash, remove the taint of Prismere. Then I shall see who you are, if not who you will become.